Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important issues in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we speak to Ivan Lelastour, crypto lead at BPI France. Good morning, Ivan, and thank you for joining us today. Let's start with a quick introduction about yourself, what is BPI and your role in it. So BPI is first a bank, uh, a sovereign fund and an export credit uh, insurer, an ICA. We help, we try to help the French economy by uh, financing it, investing in it and helping this economy to be more competitive abroad. We inject nearly 40 billions into the French economy uh, each year. Relating to crypto, how do these um, export credit agencies approach crypto? Do you have some use case example on how ECA assists crypto startups or DeFi protocols? Uh, it's a very good question. First, the idea is to be very pragmatic, to say, hey, uh, crypto might change the world. Uh, we inject 40 billions. Let's use a little part of this <laughs> money. Uh, to sustain uh, the blockchain crypto ecosystem in France. So that's the financing part. We have nearly an indirect exposure of 75 million uh, mm -hmm. regarding crypto. So 30 million is for financing, 10 million is for direct investment, so equity investment. We also did a first token operation, but it's very small for now. It was more a test, but it was a, a great success. And the rest is fund of fund. So we invest into funds that deals with, uh, I mean, crypto VCs. Then there are more global thinking about what could be the use case for a bank in a crypto world tomorrow. Uh, do we need to have crypto? Do we need to do crypto transaction? And for example, for export credit insurance, we already had discussions with some other ACAs and other um, governmental bodies in, in Germany, for example, to say, hey, why couldn't we use crypto to finance uh, projects abroad, infrastructure projects abroad? But as many governmental things, this takes time. And, but we have some benchmark. We expect, for example, the Chinese CBDC to be used in the next years for export credits or export insurance. Mm. I wanted to get from, from your institutional experience something out and it touches FTX collapse straight away. So hot coffee in the morning. <laughs> uh, so with the FTX collapse, there was a lot of media and political coverage. And um, in many cases, this coverage addressed uh, this event as an evidence of the failure of the blockchain technology as a whole. Um, this actually raises an issue in the community, which is what is the level of knowledge of blockchain of this regulatory elite, meaning the politicians in Bruxelles, maybe also in media, in French media, as long as you are aware? Um, yes, yeah, good question. It's, I mean, crypto industry deserves way better than FTX. And we are all responsible somehow. Uh, I'm guilty. I was thinking that SBF was kind of a genius and didn't say to myself, like, double check stuff. Maybe it can be a fraud. And that's where, where we are all guilty. Uh, some part of the crypto industry is not guilty. They said you should use non-custodial wallet, uh, don't trust verify, and, and, and these people were right, and they are still right. Mm -hmm. But, of course, this is still a complex technology. This is not fully matured, and that's what makes it so great. Because if you study quantum physics, it's pretty linear. You need to be good at maths and physics. You need to do a university of physics. You need to do a PhD in quantum physics. And all your colleagues will be quantum physicists. Mm -hmm. But the difference with crypto is that everybody can contribute. It's open. Uh, I'm very bullish on decentralized science. Uh, we, we, we may mm -hmm. be cover that later. Right. But this is very different. And from an institutional point of view, 
some people see the potential and some people are kind of afraid of this or don't believe that this has potential. But at the end of the day, as, and that's the trick for BPI France, as we must sustain innovation, we have to give a chance to cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of the bank, we have a classic bank that use target two, target two securities that are IT systems from central banks that can bug, but because you're in kind of a, a closed loop, everybody agrees. So that's also show the technical challenge of cryptocurrency. And I think we will go through many cycles, but each time cryptocurrency will improve its model. On the other hand, and this is not a secret, central banks are challenged right now. And, and this is super interesting because the more we dig into cryptocurrencies and the more we understand current economy, and honestly, uh, some people I know well, they work in finance, but they don't have a clue about economy, how it works. What crypto native tools may be used in the future as building blocks in regulation and supervision of crypto itself. Do you have any um, scenarios forecast? Uh, this is difficult because the potential is here, but you have to change something is the culture of institutions. And it's not an easy task. I mean, regulators should be more aware technologically. And this is something everybody tries to do. There was this debate about the proof of reserve and the real efficiency of proof of reserve. But these are good questions. But do you think that the best regulatory approach will take place um, at a protocol level or maybe at the application layer, meaning the front ends, the, the clients? Uh, so what actually people are interacting with on the on a website on a, on a dap etc if if the regulator has really the potential to understand the infrastructure layer he should because then you can in a way fight mev understand what mev is and fight it yeah fight it is a big word but regulate it yeah. or if you just say do a dap and do a login password uh, <laughs> so people <laughs> would be secure it's a lazy way and that's also the challenge of regulators they have so many things to regulate uh, the teams are not very numerous when a guy is good uh, or a girl is good she's hired by the crypto industry and that's part of the game but if, if you put yourself in the shoes of the regulator this is tough to regulate. And this is why I think we should change a little bit the culture of or the model of regulation. There is a, a crypto wallet where you can have a guardian that can handle your key. And this is super clever. And this is maybe a way to show regulators that there are some ways to help people being educated. And But to do this, you have to be innovative. And this is the case of PPI France, who are investing a lot into IT systems, into hiring uh, young, talented developers. Because if we don't, uh, it would be super painful. Finland's Minister of Communications recently called for a European recognition of DAOs. What do you think are the necessary steps to get DAOs regulated in, in Europe um, or absorbed or integrated? Honestly, again, the answer is a mix of old things and new things. If you really want to regulate in a clever way DAOs, DeFi and stuff, put a tax function in smart contracts. Right. Uh, and then uh, you can say it's regulated. <laughs> Everybody can see some transparency there and it would be super efficient. And I'm sure that if you do this, some DAOs will pay taxes. But regulating this is a nightmare right now because uh, you have a very stable system of uh, incorporation and you need to, to, to rephrase it, to, to reshape it. Uh, but as you mentioned, Finland did this, uh, UK regulator also asked uh, open contributions to how we could improve things with DAOs. So uh, Wyoming, of course, 
kind of regulated it. Uh, and I'm sure that this will continue. But again, very hard to say which will be the final form of DAOs. Let's talk about Euro. Why don't we have a stable coin yet? And uh, do you think that maybe this highly anticipated digital Euro could serve as the instrument to have audited reserve for a euro-backed stable coin. Sorry, I'm casting. I like to cast scenarios and like to ping our guests. Yeah, with, yeah, no. You can you can uh, wear your institutional uh, hat, but you can also go freestyle. No, what, what what is funny is that digital euro is a son of cryptocurrencies or, or, or a girl from cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. because before electronic money was already existing. And when we say the central banks are printing money, of course they're printing some money, but to get these facilities, uh, they use code. It's just closed loop code where the central banks say, hey, let's create in a way a uh, hundred million debts and I do the credit on the other side. So it's monetary creation it's the way the economy, the modern economy works since the end of Bretton Woods. The good news for the American economy is that you can print as much dollar as you want. And I would say you can print as much dollar as the economy would accept in a way. This is the limit. Yeah. And now they, everything was fine and then you had the financial crisis, but then you print more money and everybody's happy. and. And then cryptocurrency come and kind of challenge you. It's it's kind of a, you know a, a stone in your boot. And they say let's let's do a digital euro. But if they're really honest, they don't want to do a digital euro. What's the use? They already have an electronic version of the euro that works well. So at the end of the day, I'm not convinced that they are super bullish on digital euro. Mm. But on the other hand, the Chinese already have a CBDC. The Australians? Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many countries, I think that more than 75% of central banks are working on CBDC projects mm. or having in production. So the sand in Bahamas is running. But this is more kind of a, a, a move where you show you're not late. But this is also a challenge for certain banks. If they, if they really want to do a digital euro, they should, I mean, multiply by 10 the salary of the developers working for social banks. We even had a joke, I mean, what is a social bank developer? Like it's a very rare animal <laughs> you only little, see at night. With little survival <laughs> instinct, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I would like from you to give us a few scenarios of... Um, crypto application in different sectors. First of all, let's maybe start with the ECA, the body that you work for. How do you think they will enter crypto and Web3? There are some tokenization scenarios in place that are con being considered. So there is uh, two sides. The first side is that we have to continue to finance innovation in this field. So if a startup wants to tokenize music ownership or music royalties, our job is to try to finance it with mm -hmm. loans, grants, equity investment. And that we will continue. This is our mission. Then you have the second part, and this is the hardest. It's the practice what you preach thing, like to say, hey, we talk about crypto, let's use it. Tokenization is a good example. Uh, I'm very bullish right now on real world assets. And again, the efficiency of the technological layer is amazing. If you want to securitize financial products, this is heavy. With blockchain, you can do it with a smart contract. If you want to automatize the payment of a loan, this is again very doable with smart contracts. And of course, traditional finance say, hey, we can do this. We get what a smart contract does. We can do this. But the problem is that they didn't do it for nearly 30 years. Right. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a positive person, but I'm like, why would you do it now? And why would you do it better than the best IT developers in the world and the best lawyers and the best economists in the world? Because of course, blockchain crypto is not only about tech. 
And, and that is fascinating in this industry. Sometimes you meet someone and they're like, oh, you're a developer. And the guy is like, no, I'm a lawyer or I'm an economist. Banks can tokenize and maybe they, they would do it with CBDC or digital euro. It is a possible future. It's just that for to do this, you need to have the best resources and the best talents. And for the moment, the best talents are going to Web3. Ivan, thank you again for joining us. It was, uh, it was a great talk. Thanks to you. If you want to listen to the full version of this podcast, find us on Spotify. Links in description. See you at the next episode.